I just know about just about everything web and mobile. So I do a lot of stuff from HTML, TSS, JavaScript, you name it, uh, I've done it. Uh, so I'm well versed in, in web, web applications, but I'm moving more and more to mobile apps. Uh, I got some training uh, on my website. In fact, actually, what you see here is on my website. Everything is free. I have literally over 100 training modules that I've developed over the last 20 years. I've worked for basically all the training institutes, uh, training companies in the Austin area, Lumen Bright, New Horizon, Multimedia Enterprise, uh, to name a few. Uh, and I also teach at work uh, and, and I also teach at other companies uh, on accessibility, like Access U conference, different things like that. And I do have a passion for teaching. Uh, I have a tendency to, to instill knowledge, make it easier to understand. I often say all we do as educators is to simplify subject matter so it can be easily understood, right? If, if I speak over your head, then I'm not really actually uh, teaching. I'm just kind of, you know, impressing you with my knowledge, right? And so what we're going to do is keep this simple tonight. Uh, this is something relatively new to me, but uh, I uh, kind of uh, became fond of it because of the ease of use of uh, AngularJS. Uh, there's a lot of frameworks out there, and I, I admonish you, get a hold of frameworks, right? Because it will make your life simple. And employ a technique that I'm fond of called fake it so you can make it. Uh, and it you, that's what I use in the industry. Uh, use those frameworks because they can save you a boatload, and that's a technical term, of time, right? So there's, there's Bootstrap, there's jQuery Mobile, there's AngularJS. There's a lot of framework. And instead of writing hundreds of lines of code, you can literally like, like write one line of code to do the same thing. So familiarize yourself as many frameworks as possible until you figure out how to program, right? Some people uh, may not know how to program, but you can fake it till you can make it, if you will, uh, by using these frameworks. Uh, my biggest regret a lot of times is uh, I wish I learned jQuery mobile three, five years ago. I wish I learned Angular five years ago. Uh, so the question then is, uh, what is AngularJS? Okay, so that's the first thing, you know, I think it was Einstein who stated that you need to define a problem before you can attempt to solve it. Well, AngularJS is a free, that's always good, uh, easy to use, that's always good, open source, kind of the same term as free, uh, JavaScript framework is a JavaScript, and there's a lot of JavaScript frameworks. You know, once you learn one, you basically learn how to do all of them because they work basically the same way, right? You connect to a framework either locally or remotely, and then you use it, and that's it. I mean, you jQuery, jQuery Mobile, uh, Angular JS, Bootstrap, to name a few, they all work off the same principle. You just connect to the framework and use it, uh, and that's what we're going to be doing tonight. Uh, so it's a JavaScript framework that is used to create dynamic websites. And that's not to be confused with static website. Most website pages are static. They don't change. I mean, they have animation, but that doesn't dictate uh, dynamic, right? Static means it doesn't change unless you change it, right? Database-driven websites or data source website, as is the case here, uh, allows you to create stuff dynamically on the fly. The page doesn't exist. And I can give you a classical example of that. If you go to... Amazon.com, when you type in a book title in, the search, in that search field, that page doesn't exist, right, until you click the search button. It goes out, grab that information from the database, and pre-populate areas of the page, the, the page cover, the author, the price, all that information just gets pre-populated in a page that didn't exist until you click that submit button, that search button. So those are database-driven websites. AngularJS does something similar to that on a smaller scale. So what we're going to be doing tonight is I have three, actually four apps. Uh, we probably have time to get through all of them. I do have them on my website. You can look at them at any time. They're free. No cost, no loss is my philosophy. Uh, and, um, and, and experiment with them. And, or you can go to the AngularJS website or go to, the, go to W3School, which is where I learned this stuff from. And I created my own material from what they had on their website, but made it more useful. I had a tendency of doing that. So why AngularJS? Well, HTML is static, as I mentioned, right? AngularJS is going to make your website dynamic. We'll see that in time. 
so what does it do? It extends the HTML framework. If you're familiar with HTML, it extends HTML to make it dynamic uh, with attributes. And these attributes are actually called directives in AngularJS. Okay, so if you know attributes in HTML, they directive in AngularJS. An attribute would be like uh, the height equal 100 in the image, right? Or width equal 100. Those are attributes. They describe an object, an image, let's say, right? So those are attributes. Well, in AngularJS, they're called directives. And we'll see a lot of these directives. I love these directives. In fact, uh, you see the power behind these directives with just a few words uh, that can create a lot of functionality uh, within your application. And then another part about Angular that I like is the, the data binding, where you bind information in your code to your page. So you create code up at the top of your page and you bind it to your page itself, what we call data binding, hence the term, right? We'll see some examples of that. And then also expressions. So expressions, uh, in, in a database-driven application, you're going to see what they are, what we call placeholders. They hold a place for something, hence the term, right? And so you, these are expressions that get resolved from data in the code, and it gets resolved in these placeholders, right? And we'll see some examples of that. So directives, binding, and expressions are the three main pillars, of, as it were, of AngularJS. We're going to see those in turn uh, once we get started. AngularJS mainly maintained by Google. How many of you have heard of Google? <laughs> I, use, I use Google every day. Uh, and uh, again, it's used basically or primarily for creating what we call a single page application. How many of you have heard of single page application where it's one page? Right. You're not where you link it to multiple pages, literally one page, and that page gets dynamically created, you know, uh, from clicks, if you will. It just pre populate that same area page from a single page. In fact, you see what we do tonight in these three applications, if we get to them, uh, it's basically done with a single page. Emphasis there on single. So, to link to these frameworks, just like any other JavaScript framework, as I mentioned earlier, you just link to it with a script tag. And we'll see that. If you want to follow along with me, in fact, uh, uh, you can go to my website, because I'm going to literally be cutting from my website and pasting into, for the sake of time, cutting and pasting into Dreamweaver. So if you got a link to the website and you have Dreamweaver, you could follow along with me and just tell me, slow down a little bit because I get excited. Um, but you can follow along with it if you want to create these little simple apps. And if you want to know what the link is, it's richmediacs.com forward slash rmcs underscore apps forward slash angular, and that's a capital A, N G U L A R capital capital J S Angular J S and it's going to take you to this page. This is the page I am on. And if you want to look at any of my training, uh, just to show you, uh, if you go to my home page to my training module, there's literally again hundreds of training module, everything from A B C of programming. Graphics, animation, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, mobile app development, you name it. I have a host of training uh, on this particular website. Uh, we're going to be going to this one right here called JS and JS Library, and we're going to we're looking at Angular JS, is where we are right now. So I'm gonna give you guys a few minutes if you want to uh, position yourself, open up Dreamweaver, uh, and if you want to also to uh, go to this website and follow along with me, you can. Before we get started, let me let me just show you what we're gonna be creating, and then we'll start creating now. And kind of break, uh, give me a break about midway, otherwise I, I just go all the way through. Uh, you know, I get excited. <clears throat> Okay, so these are the three apps we're going to be creating. Actually, there's four of them, but we're going to cover one, two, and possibly part of three. So we got a beginner, intermediate, advanced, 
and a expert version of these apps. So we're going to start off small, and each app gives a little bit more involved. Okay, so uh, again, depend upon the number of questions and the time we have, we'll dictate how far we get into those apps. Mm. If you don't have Dreamweaver, if you, if you got a, um, a word that'll tell you, you know, if you know how to do HTML fast, you could probably follow along too. <clears throat> but most of what I do, I do in Dreamweaver, so um, it's just faster. And I also have a employee directory PHP MySQL version of this app. So this is for you database uh, folks out there that's that know with PHP and MySQL, I'm, I'm, I've created a PHP version of the app. So there's actually about five different apps out here, and they get progressively difficult as you as you advance through them. First one we're going to be talking about, and I, I name them E, E for electronics, right? We got an E notepad, a need to do list, an E shopping, and an E directory. And we're going to be going through all of those within two hours. So again, this is uh, to borrow a phrase that I use quite often. Uh, putting a two-pound bologna in a one-pound bag. For your country folks, y'all y'all appreciate that. <clears throat> okay, so the first one we want to create is the e-notebook, uh, e-notepad, I should say. Okay, so I'm going to click on that, and it's going to take me to my instruction page, and I have instructions as well as... Uh, now, the, the golden rule is uh, to make this thing simple, otherwise we could spend literally weeks doing this, the golden rule, and you, you guys know me, I'm known for my show pandemism. Whatever you see in blue, that's what you do. Okay, sing it with me now. Okay, whatever you see in blue is what you do. So whatever you see in blue in code is what you're going to be copying and pasting into your document. So I'll just let you know. So with that in mind, let's get started. So I want you to open up Dreamweaver if you don't already have it open. And Let's define a website for our apps. Uh, we could do that. Um, so I'm going to do a site um, for those who have Dreamweaver. Let's do a new site. And let's call it, this thing e, e apps, I guess. I guess just for the sake of time. And let's navigate to our desktop. I'm going to create a folder on our desktop. And let's just call it e dash apps. And it doesn't let that dash in the whole thing. Okay. So e apps, you can call it whatever you want, but, uh, and then create a folder on your desktop. You may need to, need to click on new folder or wherever. It could be on your flash drive, wherever. Just create that folder. And then once you do that, this is how you define a website in Dreamweaver. Two simple process, two simple steps. You you basically give the app the site or the app they want in the same, if you will, a name, and then you tell it where you want to store those files. In this case, on my desktop in a folder that I just created called eApps. Okay. And so I'm gonna click save, and it's gonna create a site called eApps with a folder of that with, to that location. So those two variables that you use to use to create your site structure, site definition, we call it. So you guys have that? Now, with that in mind, let's go to my instructions here. So first thing we want to do is, and I like to do things from simple to complex, right? So we start off with static and then we go dynamic, okay? And the, the, the reason for that is you can see things, right? Typically, it's good to be able to see things, particularly, you know, us knowing, for you non-programmers, it's good to be able to see things before you program and make it interactive, right? So we want to see the app before we make it functional. Uh, so first of all, let's create the HTML framework. So in Dreamweaver, let's do a file, new, and let's use the HTML doc type, and let's give our document a uh, title of eNote. E notepad. Then click the create button. And that's going to create the skeleton of the framework. So this is all HTML, nothing new here. 
And let's save that as enotepad.html. So do file save as or control S. And save, it's going to automatically save it in the site that you define, so you don't need to navigate to it. And let's call it enotepad. HTML. Click OK. And again, tell me if I'm going too fast because I've done this a thousand times, so it's all old hat to me. Okay, so what we have is ba the basic HTML framework. You have the doc type. This is not an HTML tag. This is a doc type. It's a set of instructions on how to define the page. In this case, that doc type basically says render this page as HTML5, the new standard. Okay, that's what the doc type. The HTML page is actually started with the HTML tag. Then within HTML tag, you have the head tag and the body tag, just like the human body. The HTML is a skin. It covers the whole body, right? And then you have the head. The head is always at the top. The body is always at the bottom. So if you use the human analogy, you see the head and the body uh, analogy associated with the HTML document. And then you have the title. Now, the title is optional, but highly recommended. Okay, it shows up in the title bar, the, the tab at the top of your browser, right? And so when we define our website, we gave it that e notepad, and that's how it showed up in the title tag. Uh, now let's go in to define some things to make it what we call mobile friendly. Uh, we're going to add, add this metadata, this meta tag. So copy again, copy what's in blue. Uh, that's what you know what to do. Copy what's in blue and paste this above the title tag. So find your title tag uh, and copy it above the title tag. And again, I don't expect you to know all of what I can. And, I can, and again, I can't explain everything that I do because otherwise we're going to run out of time really quick. But just note that this particular meta tag makes your app mobile friendly. And mobile is global. Let's show pandemic there. Um, and so this is going to make your app more mobile friendly. So if you're creating, a, uh, if you want to create this as a mobile app, which is, is just about everything that I do these days are mobile for me, uh, this is one tag you need to remember, I promise you. And then just to make things a little bit more accessible to people with disabilities, in the HTML tag up at the top, uh, type in language and set it equal to English. And that just makes it a little bit more uh, accessible to people with disabilities. Okay, so an HTML tag, again, that's optional, but highly recommended. So again, that's the framework. Again, there's nothing fancy here. There's nothing new that if you've done any HTML work, you should know what this is, right? Now let's create the view. Now, what we're going to be doing is we'll typically um, when we get into the more advanced app is there's a methodology in programming called Model View Controller. You've heard of that, right? Model view controller, right? Uh, it's a way of presenting the information in the application. You create a model, create the view, which is what the user sees, and you create a controller, which controls the model and the view. Okay? And so uh, you can do that with uh, AngularJS. So what we want to do is create the view, what the user will see. Okay? And again, this is regular HTML, nothing dynamic here yet. Okay, we're, we're doing static before we go dynamic. Okay, so again, copy what's in blue from my website, paste it between the body tag. And you can see we have our view right there. We have a title, in fact, let me just highlight the elements. We have the div tag, a div is just an empty container, it's a block level element uh, to house things as it were. And then we have this H1 tag, that's the title, that e-notepad that you see there. And then we have a text area. Now, it's not showing up right now because this is the part that we're going to be making dynamic, okay? Uh, this is a simple text area uh, that we're going to be populating in a bit. And then we got two line break tags, just to add a little space between the elements. And then we have another div, and inside of it, we have these two buttons. These are save button and clear button. We have those two buttons inside of another. Div. Again, div short for division, uh, block level element to house those two buttons. And a P tag that basically we're going to be showing the number of characters left in our little 
e notepad. Okay, and I love e notepad. <clears throat> so you guys see that again? This is all static emphasis there. HTML. Any questions? Is that clear to me? Okay, save your work. Control S. And let's go in and add some CSS goodness. So I'm going to copy this right here because that's the name I want to give it. Um, we're going to call it e-notepad.css. Let's call it, let's create a CSS file because we want to, we want to make it look nice, right? Um, and so let's copy this, uh, copy that name and let's create a CSS file. So go back to Dreamweaver and do a file new, but this time we're not doing HTML, we're doing CSS. So make sure you select the CSS doc type, a document type, and click the create button to create it. And I'll create a blank CSS file. And let's save it. Okay, so we do file save. And let's give it a, that name I cut, a, cut, uh, uh, I cut just a minute ago, a copy rather, and call enopad.css and hit save. And again, it's going to save it in that same folder. So you got the HTML file and you got the CSS file. Let's go back to my website. And now let's copy the CSS styles that we're going to be using. So again, select what's in blue, right? Copy what's in blue. Go back to Dreamweaver and you could delete, you know, the, you could keep it, or you could, or you could delete it. Either one doesn't matter. I'm gonna just delete it for clarity's sake, and I'm gonna paste that in. So that's some CSS, and I can explain that real quick. Basically, I'm using a uh, the body, a tag, a tag element. And remember, a tag element will target every tag of that type totally, right? And this body element basically says make everything in my document an area. So the one tag, the P tag, anything in the, as is a, as a child of a parent tag becomes a aerial font without me having to style all of these other elements in the page, what we call code of economy or economy of code, if you will. You, you, the children will inherit properties of its parents unless they define their own. Okay. All right, so if you target a parent, the children will inherit those DNA properties, in this case, the aerial font style, of his parent without him having to manually do them all. Okay, so that's what that does. And then we want to style a panel. So we're going to give it a little rounded corners and a little drop shadow and a, and a backdrop, you know, make it look fancy, if you will, for you designers out there. And then the app title. So we're going to kind of style the title. So that's what the app, these two classes do, the panel and the app title. So anyway, save that. And let's go back to my notes. Now that we've created it, we need to link it to the page because it's there, right? Uh, you saw it in the folder in that file panel, but it's not linked to the HTML file. So we want to link it. And we're going to use a link tag to do that. So copy again what's in blue, the link tag, and paste it above the closing head tag. So right here, I want to paste that in. And you can see that the... Um, the E note inherit the aerial font. Remember, it was a new, new time Roman, I believe, prior to this, right? Uh, so you saw some styling took place, but not not everything just yet. We're going to do another thing to help out with our little app. Okay, so now that we have that, let's give let's associate our class to our div tag to style it. So copy what's in blue, step three of my website, and I want you to paste that in the div tag, it's right below the body tag, and bam, I got a nice little, you know, uh, panel, drop shadow, I got a little, uh, little color to the background, whatever you want to do, right, however you want to style, how big you want to make it, right? So there you have, we've got our title, we got our panel, where we're gonna be typing text, we got our two buttons, and we got our text for the number of characters that will be left remaining from typing. Again, this is all static. Again, static, then dynamic. Any questions?
Okay. And I think I left out the CSS for the uh, for the, the heading here, but that's fine. We can do without that right now. Okay, so now let's create. It just looked like plain you know, what you saw before I had applied that style, just plain HTML. <clears throat> okay, so now we want to go dynamic, right? We, we got the static application, if you will. Uh, we want to add some dynamics. So two things we need to do, uh, two scripts that we need to add. One is the framework itself, the Angular framework. And it's real easy. You just connect to it. Now, we, now again, you got to have an internet connection uh, for this to work. Uh, it goes out to the Google API website and bring back the framework, what we call the CDN, Content Delivery Network. So you're connecting remotely. You could download this framework and connect it locally, right? Uh, but we're doing a remote connect. And then we need to have the script that we're going to be writing. Again, we're going to be writing code in order for this app to work. And again, we're going to start with a simple app and advance to a more, uh, a more advanced app, hopefully, if time permits. So let's copy these two scripts. Uh, again, copy what's in blue. And I want you to paste it below the title tag. I, I tell you, paste it, yeah, paste it below the link tag, because since we already we have a link tag. Paste it below the link tag. <clears throat> like that. So we have the link tag, we have the script, which is the framework itself. And then I'm gonna call about a little space so you can see it better. And then we have another script with a barrel that I created uh, predefined. So let me talk about what this variable is. So if you didn't know anything about variable, variable is a container for a single data type, right? As an array is a variable for multiple data types. So we got this variable. Uh, and the name of the variable is app. You can call it whatever you want, right? So I'm creating an app, so I call it app, right? Makes sense, right? Uh, Variable should be given a descriptive name. And then I'm assigning it the framework. So this is the framework, Angular, all right? So now that I've, I linked it up here, now I'm assigning it to this variable called app. Uh, so I'm associating the framework to that variable called app, or what we call make a reference to that variable. And then I'm using the module method of the Angular object to to create my app. Again, this it might be tech, tech, techno geek to you. I'm um, basically creating an app with this code, as in, in essence. And it's the name of the app, and again, you can call it whatever you want. I just happen to call it e Notepad app because that's the name that's the name of my app. So I call it whatever I want. You can call it you know whatever your name app. Okay, doesn't matter. So anyway, I call this app e Notepad app. And then I have, for, for those who may know, this is a blank array, right? It doesn't have any, if you know anything about arrays, this is a blank array. We'll see later on how to populate an array. Uh, so basically, we, we, we created a framework, now we assign a framework of, to a variable as a module and giving it a name. Because there's only three things you do in programming. Uh, it took me 15, 20 years to get this revelation, but you create an object, give it a name, and you tell it to do something. That's all you do in any programming language, I promise you. That's all you ever do in object going to programming. You create an object, give it a name, and you tell it to do something. That's it, period. Okay? Uh, and so I've created an object. This is an object, uh, and I'm uh, giving it a name of app, and now I'm going to tell it to do something. Okay? And that's what we're going to be doing here in a bit. <clears throat> So now we have the app. We want to create the controller. Okay, remember the controller control both the mod, the model, and the view. Remember the model view controller MVC for object-oriented programmers out there, right? It controls everything, right? So we got the app. Now we want to control it. So before we do that, 
I want you to copy what's in blue right here. And I almost missed this, this important step. Uh, copy this code and paste it in the body tag. And we'll talk about what that is in a sec. And I'm adding the word data dash in the front of that. Uh, and the reason for that is when you put data dash ng, anytime you see that ng, that's AngularJS. That's your date giveaway, what we call it. So it's a AngularJS directive. Adding the data dash in front of it makes it HTML5 compatible. Okay, so it's always good to put data dash ng and then whatever that directive is. In this case, the directive is app. I'm saying, hey, I want you, your, you being the body tag, I want you to behave like an app. I'm creating an app, a mobile app, okay? And so that's all you have to do to create an app. How many of you with a little effort think you can type that little, word, that little phrase right there? Just with a little effort. You just made your first app, okay? You just, not, not doing a whole lot just yet, but in, in essence, this is an app. Okay, we hadn't told it to do a whole lot, but we told a body tag, and you know, body tag is most of the HTML page, right? Besides all of the stuff in the heading, the body tag is what a user sees, right? And so I attach it to the body. You can attach it to anything. I make it, you can make the, you know, a div tag an app or whatever, you know, a table an app. You know, you do the body and then everything inside of the body tag becomes an app, becomes, becomes part of that app. And so we want to keep it simple. We just do the body tag and life is easy. As I like to keep it. <clears throat> okay. Say that again. Right here? This is this is basically the object, the object, and I'm just assigning it to a variable called app. Oh, object. Yeah, object, and you, and again, I don't want to go into too much detail, but typically, when object on a program, you have these three concepts: object dot property, object dot method, and object dot event. Again, the only three things you do in any object on a programming language: object dot property that defines properties of an object, object.method, that's what an object can do or what can be done to it, and object.event, that's what, you, what triggers an object to do what it does. When you click, that's an event, right? And it does something. So that's the click event, let's say. So there's only three things you can do to any object, right? You can assign it properties, methods, or an event. And so this Angular is an object from the framework, because that big framework, if you, if you didn't have to do if you had to do this yourself, you'd be writing hundreds of lines of code, right? The framework handles all of the heavy lifting, the dirty work, as it were, for you. All I got to do is type that one word, Angular. That's an object. And I'm saying assign it a module and give it that name of eNotepad app. And that's the app, okay? Uh, and then we're not using the, the uh, this is for dependency. And, and by the way, I'm passing in, two, these are two arguments I'm passing to. A method is a, it's basically a function of an object, okay? <clears throat> okay. Did we, did we paste this in to the body? I think we did, right? So basically, this, dire now, now, now this is the first directive that we're starting to use, that data-ng-app. That's a directive. Again, it's just like a attribute in HTML. If you know it's attribute in HTML, directive is the exact same thing, just goes by a different name. You know, like Shakespeare rose by any other name, still rose, right? Uh, you Shakespearean folks out there. Uh, <laughs> right? And so we've made that particular tag, divided tag in this case, an app. I, I typed that in. That, that wasn't part of the, on my website, I, I, that was something I added oh, okay. after the fact. Right. Yeah, I put data in front of it. Okay. Data dash ng. And that just makes it HTML5 compatible. Okay. You don't have to do that. But if you want to, if you want your website to be HTML5 compatible, and I don't see a reason why you wouldn't, 
you don't want to use data dash in front of all of your MG directives. Oh well, not necessarily more responsive, but uh, which which term? Responsive. Oh, responsive basically uh, allows you to uh, create the, your application where it responds to different media types, right? So you can create it if if it's on a on a, on a um, desktop, it'd be that size, uh, and if it's on a me on a medium device like a tablet. It'll be that size, and if it's on a phone, and then it'll scale or it'll change and and hide things and show things accordingly, right? Based upon the media type. That's what we call responsive web design. And the thing typically when you deal with responsive responsive web design, you want to have the concept of mobile first, right? If you create for the mobile, it's easy to scale up. You don't want to create for a desktop first and then try to scale down because it's always harder to do that. So if you scale for the mobile, what we call mobile first. It's easier to go the other way. So mobile first is the methodology that most developers use when they're creating mobile-based applications. <clears throat> That's another class. OK, so now that we have our app, we got our little app. Y'all got y'all happy. Y'all more, you can go home and say, I'm a mobile app developer now. <clears throat> right, put that on your resume. <laughs> And be all excited. Now let's assign a controller to the app. We created the app. Now let's assign keyword there a controller to the app, right? Uh, so if I got this computer and I'm plugging in this card, I'm assigning that card to this computer, right? So that's in that's, essence that's what I'm doing. Okay, so copy what's in blue again, and I'm gonna talk about it. Uh, when we paste it inside of Dreamweaver and paste that below that variable up in that script tag and make sure you paste things in the right place, right? Uh, I, used to, I tell them often time when I'm teaching programming, wash your cases, your spaces, and your braces. Everything I teach is in threes, okay? Just let you know. <clears throat> okay, so let me talk about what, what, this, what this is actually doing, uh, the code here. So again, we got the app, that's an app. We've already created it in the line before, right? that variable, that's the app. We're assigning it a controller. We have to have an app, and then we have to have a controller. So we assign the app the controller, and that's what this is right here. And we got to give the controller name, just like we gave the app a name. Likewise, we need to give the controller name. We call it eNotepad controller. Again, you can call it whatever you want. I just try to be consistent in my nomenclature. Uh, so I'm calling it an e notepad controller. And you can spell out control if you want to if you I just abbreviate it. And then, so you pass it two, two arguments. Arguments are things you put inside of a function, right? Those arguments are parameters, sometimes call. So the first thing you pass into it is the name of the controller. The second thing you pass into a uh, into the controller is the function. Now, for years, always, this was like a mystical thing to me, right? <clears throat> uh, you ask people, what, what does a function do? Can anybody tell me what a function do? Hmm? Okay, what you tell it? Okay, that's true. I, I like that. Return a value, okay. Perform some tasks. Okay, all that's, all that's true. But what, the revelation I got on what a, you know what a function does is that a function tells an object, and again we talk about object-oriented programming, right? A function tells an object how to function. Okay, that's all it does. So whatever I want this thing to do, I put it in a function. So again, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to know what a function is. It tells an object how to function. Okay, so that's what this function uh, thing is. So I'm, whatever I put in between those curly braces in that function is what this object's gonna do. Okay, so let's do that. And by the way, inside of there, I'm passing another argument called scope, and that's just uh, the term, uh, the the syntax that's used for Angular JS, and it differs depending upon the framework. But for JS, the, the good news is once you once you start doing this, it's easy. Okay, because it's always the same. Okay. So anyway, we, 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 we create this controller, assign the controller to the app, give the controller name, 
and now, and we give it a function too, as an argument. And that function will tell this controller how to function. Okay, now in this case, I'm telling it how to function. I'm saying create a variable called meshes. And the first thing you learn in any programming language book is hello world. How many don't know what I'm talking about? First thing you ever learn in any programming language is hello world. So I'm telling this app, you got to display hello world. Okay. Because that's my message I have right here. So let's see how we can do that. So let's assign. Yeah, you notice I use that term a lot, assign, right? You, you assign the body tag to be an app. Now I'm going to assign the body tag also to be a controller. It could be another element, right? But I want to keep it separate, so I'm going to assign it to the same element. So not only did we assign the object, the body tag the um, as an object, but we also want to assign it a, a controller, as a controller. So I want you to copy this. What's in blue, and paste it inside of your body tag. And if you want to add data dash in front of it, remember what that does, right? It makes it HTML5 compatible. We don't have that on my website. Um, yeah, thank you. It wouldn't work if you didn't do that. Okay, so we got the body tag as an app. We got the body tag as a controller, right? Now let's assign a message to see if it works. Okay, so I'm gonna copy what you see here on my website and paste it right below my opening body tag. And you see what? Hello world, right? Notice, notice the double curly braces. And this is the, the, the convention that AngularJS used. Other places, it may be angle brackets. It, it might be parentheses. These are placeholders. They hold the place for database-driven application stuff to come in, right? <clears throat> So there you have it. You see, hello world. Now, let me just make a mistake to show you that uh, this is actually. So what it's doing is it's getting this data from my controller because control. I told the controller what to do. Assign it a, 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 a variable called meshes, right? And then this is what we call an expression. This gets resolved to something based upon some condition, right? And so this is assigned the word hello world up here. So this message right here will get resolved to hello world. And you see it right there. Like we preview in the browser. Let me just do a save all and then preview that in the browser. You see it clear. <clears throat> you see hello world, right? Being displayed. That's the place. So let me just break the code to show you what happens if the, the proof that it is actually coming from that controller. Uh, I'm going to just. Well, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna break the, I'm gonna just break the code right here. I'm gonna just put an extra M in front of the meshes, right? Do control less. And let me just preview that in a browser. And it doesn't even show up, okay? Uh, because it's broken. <clears throat> So I'm gonna undo that. And if you want to, I could go in and change the hello world up there and to something. I could say, let's just do this. Goodbye world, right? Okay, so hit save and preview that in a browser. Goodbye world. Yeah. So the data in the data is getting assign that placeholder, right? So whatever you create up here gets pre-populated in those placeholders. And that's that's the walk of any content management system. And I've, I've done many a content management system in my time. In fact, I'm working on one right now, creating my own content management system. Similar to, if you know WordPress, uh, Drupal, Joomla, 
all of those are based off of a content management system, right? They all work off the same principle. And they only do th four things. You can only create, you can add to a database, you can delete, you can update, uh, you can add, update, delete, or select. That's all you can do to any database, bar none. Okay? CRUD, C R U D, create, read, update, and delete. And then some people, you like to put an S in front of that for search, because sometimes you want to search for records in a database. Right? You can put an S in front of CRUD uh, if you want to do a search. <clears throat> so here, here we go. And let me just move that in a little bit there. And so here we got our app, got it style. Again, it's not wholly doing a whole lot yet. Uh, we want to create some functionality. I don't know why that's doing that. What did that do? Okay, so let's move on to creating some some code here. And let me get rid of some of these windows. Okay. So let's create, when you're writing code, you'd write code modularly, right? You write a code for the clear button, right? You write a code for the save button, right? You write a code for the delete button. And you just add it to your code. And that's what we're going to be doing in essence. Okay, so first function we want to create is the clear function. So we want to be able to type, and then we can hit the clear button, that fills your clear. That's what we want to do. So again, copy what's in blue. And I want you to paste it below that scope message variable, uh, scope meshes, um, I don't know, did we have this in there? I don't know, I think we, I don't know if we had or not. Uh, actually, we had hello world in there, so we're going to delete hello world out of there. So let's copy that and make sure you inside uh, this block right there. Let me just show you this right here because this is oftentimes, particularly for beginners, they make a mistake and paste the code in the wrong place. And you have all kinds of headaches if you do that, believe me. You got to paste it in the right place. So this is what I call, I don't know if you guys can see that uh, real faint, but it got the, uh, the parentheses, there's a uh, curly brace, a parentheses, semicolon. That's what I call a blockhead. If you look at it, you know, it looks like a blockhead, right? So that's the, that's the close of my statement right here. You see this, this highlight, this, this highlight, let me highlight that one. That highlights that parentheses, right? And then the semicolon in the most program will close a statement. Just like you add a period in every sentence to close a period, to close a sentence, right? You use a period. Well, in programming, uh, you use a semicolon to close a statement. And so that's the close of my statement. So you need to make sure when you cut and paste in code that you indeed put it in the right place. If I paste the thing outside of this code block, a block of code, it's not gonna work. So with that in mind, uh, I think I, I pasted it, uh, I'll copy it. So I'm pasting it in, and I, I like to, particularly for a classroom setting, I like to use uh, comments in my code to, to, to modulize my code as well. So you can kind of see this is one code, and the next code start right after another comment. It just makes it easy to know where the, where the code starts and stops, if you will. So this is a clear function. Clear function will clear. The text. So we got this function called clear, and it, we're assigning it to a function. So again, clear is more like an object, and we're telling this object how to function. Again, going back to what I said earlier, and I'm telling it to whatever I type in to erase whatever's in there. So I'm setting it to a blank string. That's how you clear stuff in any programming language, right? You just set it to a blank string, and that's what we're doing here. Remember, meshes is that variable. We want to tell it to clear it. So let's assign the button a click event. Okay, and we'll talk about that and how that works here in a bit. So copy what's in blue. Copy what's in blue. And find your button. An easy way to get get to it, and this is on the 
clear button. So make sure you select the clear button. And a good way to get to things in Dreamweaver is once you have a split screen, click on the element that you want to target, and it's going to highlight it in code view. Otherwise, you might be chasing down, chasing it down all the time. Notice when I click here, my clear code got highlighted. Quick way of getting to the code I want to add to. So inside of the button, I'm going to paste in that, and again, I'm going to add data dash in front of it. This, another directive. Now, we've used several directives. We use the app directive. We use the what? Control directive, I believe. And now we're using the click directive. I guess, can anybody guess what the click directive does? Huh? What is it? Yeah, when you click the button, right? So when you click, it's listening for what we call a click event, right? In most things, in most programs, you got to click a button, right? How many of you click a button before, for crying out loud, right? Uh, you, you, so when you click a button, it fires off an event. And so this is what we call an event handler. It handles the event or event listener. It listens for an event, right? And so it's listening for you to click that button. When you click that button, it's going to run this function called clear, right? You guys see that? So when I click that button, it's going to run that function that we just cr created earlier called clear, and it's going to clear that particular field. Now, Okay, well, what, depending upon what you're doing, this is actually called what we call the event handler. Event list is a little bit more advanced uh, event, event type. Uh, this is called the event handler. It handles the event. Okay, so it's, 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 and in essence, this listens for you to, it's like a listener. It's listening for someone to hit that click, that, that uh, clear button. And when, it, when someone hit the clear button, it executes that clear function, because that's what I signed it to. Right. So I signed the clear function that we just created earlier. Now what we do is data bind this text field that you see right here as my event that I want to clear. So go back to my code. I, I can. Yeah, I, I was thinking about that, but let me, let me do that. I was thinking about that. So uh, what he's saying is he's, he's a program in the house. I was thinking man, I ought to do that, but I don't know if I want to do that. I, mean, I don't want to kind of confuse him. Uh, so basically right now the message is assigned to this, I think, right? So if I hit the clear button, bam, it clears it. Because it's associated with it, right? And so it's going to clear that object. And clear it just makes it empty, right? Uh, I could put something else in there and tell it something else, to do something else, right? Uh, so you can put whatever you want in that clear function. It doesn't have to clear it. I can say um, now we kind of going off base, but this is all good. Okay, you get me started here. Okay, say that. Okay, so I say hello class, right? That's what I'm putting inside of that message. Um, so let's see what happens here. So I got goodbye world, right? Now when I hit the clear button. Because it's associated with that that H1 tag as the message, right? I think. Uh, hello, class. See that? Uh, and so again, you create an object, you give it a name, you tell it to do something. That's all you ever do in programming. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. You don't even have to be a geek. I used to think you had to be a geek to be a programmer. And, and by the way, and you don't have to know numbers. I hate working with numbers. People think, man, you do programming, you do mobile app development. I hate numbers. I usually rely on my sons you know, to help me, with, you know, to add two numbers together. You know, uh, you don't have to be good at. You know, if you need a formula, just go look up the formula. That's what I do. <laughs> okay, uh, programming is all about uh, thinking logically, right? And most things you do in programming, you're turning things off, you're turning things on, you're hiding things. You know, you're showing things and different things, show and hide. Basically, that's what it is a lot of cases, particularly in mobile app development. Okay, but anyway, that, that, about five brownies for that. By the way, in my class, we pass out virtual brownies for good responses. And so uh, five brownies for that, they virtually free, calorie free, rather. Uh, 
So you get actually, I want ten brownies for that because that was I thought about doing that, and I said, nah, I ain't gonna do that. But I'm glad you brought that up. You read, you did indeed. <clears throat> okay, so let's get back on track to do actually what we were intended to do. Okay, okay, so let's go back to code. Put some of these up, and let's select this. This is another, this is another, again, it's all about the directives, right? This is yet another directive. We did the app directive, we did the bind directory. I don't know if we did the bind, we did uh, the click directive, right? This is another directive. Uh, just think attribute, HTML. So copy what's in blue. And I want, to pay, I want you to paste this in the text area uh, input field. So again, this is a text area right there. Again, I'm click on it to select it in code so I can get to it really. And I'm gonna space and paste. And I'm gonna add data in a space. Okay, so again, I'm telling that to be the message now. Okay. And I'm gonna delete this one just to show you that. Uh, I don't want to confuse you with that one. I could keep it up there, but I want to just move that out of the way. So I'm basically not now the way this the way this model works, which I like to use. This models the data that's in the application. And let me just save it. How are we doing on time? Uh, Okay, um, let's see how this works. So notice I got good world. I have that in my application, right? So it's, 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 it's showing that in my code. Now I could type this, I could put whatever I want in here, right? I put whatever I want in there. But when I clear button, it clears it. Now remember, I put hello world because I had that in my clear function. So what do I need to do? So I need to go to my clear function, right? And I need to take that out. Oh, remember, because the goal is to make sure nothing shows up in that clear in that text there, right? So I could put whatever I want. You can have something a button to say inject some text in there. Again, it's all about thinking logically, right? Once you do this enough, you, it's, all, it's all child's play after a while. So now when I do that again, and um, refresh that. Let me, let me take this out too. Uh, yeah, I mean, that'll, that'll still work, but I, I wanted to just type in there. But anyway, we'll, we'll just keep it in there. That's type. Right? Type whatever you want. And then when I hit clear, bam, it clears it. So I clear that particular text field. Now, again, I would probably take that goodbye, goodbye world, hello world, whatever it is, out of my application, because that's what's showing, showing up, because that's what it's assigned to, right? It's all about assignment. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, let me let me refresh it. See, goodbye world, right? That I, I really don't want that in there when I first start my application, right? So what I should have is yeah, there you go. I don't want anything to show up in there, right? Hmm? Yeah, yeah, you can put that in there if you wanted to. Yeah, you can put that in there. Uh, I, I just want to be a clear feel uh, when I when I do it. So, you, whatever you want to do, you know, you want to put inner text here that that'll work for you. Uh, but clear that. And since y'all want to do that, let's just do that. Y'all like that? I'm kind of working with y'all today. Okay, that's all good. And what you would say, enter text here? Yes. Okay. Enter text here. That's what you want. Got to give my student what they want, right? 
there you go. Okay, so we save that. Uh, and let's preview it in a browser. You know, text here. And then when I hit clear, bam. Okay. So again, you could have something there, you can add uh, whatever you want. And then we, we can do save. Now, save function doesn't actually save anything because we need a local storage. Uh, and we probably don't have time to look, looking at the time. We probably won't be doing local storage tonight. Uh, so that's the first app. Can we take like a, man, what time we got to eight o'clock, huh? Yeah. Man, that's going to be cutting it close. I was hoping to get to, that, to, 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 to all of these, but maybe I have to come back in another day. Um, Let's take a 10 minute break and then we'll try to do another. But, but this, wasn't that, that, this wasn't that difficult, right? I mean, it wasn't that difficult. Uh, so, anyway, that was the e notepad. So, the next one we're going to do is the e to do list, okay, which is the real fancy one. Um, and But before we do that, so I don't run out of time, I want to show you the one that I was really intending to do. Uh, we don't want to get time to do it, but at least it's going to inspire you. At least go to my website, and you can see how to do it. Uh, can you post that link up on uh, the Facebook page where it happened tonight? Uh, I can send it to Donna to have her posted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <clears throat> okay. So this, this is e. Um, actually, I, I got around here. E directory. Let me show you how it works. So this is a little app that I created with Angular JS. And I'm just kind of demonstrate how it works. Again, using the CRUD, the only thing you ever do to any database, right? Uh, I dynamically created this. This is one row in a table that gets dynamically created using the repeat directive, right? Uh, so anyway, what you can do with this app is just to show you, first of all, I can add an employee. So let's say add myself, okay? Someone add me, notice it animate down, someone add me as an employee to this company. And call myself a software developer, Duh. right? And then I'm gonna hit save. Now watch when I hit save, and I got a little alert that I forgot to comment out. When I save, notice it closed on because I don't need it no more, right? And then it add, added me to the list. And I, since I didn't include a picture, got you know not available avatar right there. Now I want to I want to edit me. Uh, so let's click on the edit. And notice it pre-populates those text fields from the database, if you will. And I'm going to just put, you know, maybe a couple of little things right on the end of it to show you that indeed it's going to get ed edited. So when I hit, well, let me hit cancel first. And again, it's going to cancel and nothing happens, right? Well, actually, I must have didn't correct that code. <laughs> Because it's supposed to cancel that. Uh, that didn't that didn't go well. Uh, but let me change this to see if it changes. So let's do SSXX. And then I hit save. And you see it, it, it updated it, right? Now let me delete me as an employee. So I hit the delete button, it's gonna prompt me. You should always prompt someone to delete a record from a database. And in order I made my my uh the delete dialog box, confirmation dialog box, personalized. I didn't just say delete an employee. I say delete a specific employee, in this case, Cornelia Chopin, SSXX, right? And now if I click OK, I automatically got deleted from the list. So I can add, I can edit, I can delete, and I can search. So if I hit ANN, -N, notice it resolves itself to AN. If I do BOB, -B, and it's not case sensitive, uh, it, it filters that selection to that particular search criteria. Now, let me just say I've, I've done a many a content management system. I've done Cold Fusion. We're talking, uh, I've done Cold Fusion. I've done PHP. I've done AS, ASP, ASP.NET, JSP, to name a few. Those are major server side technology languages. And I'm telling you, this made life easier. AngularJS made this what we call child's play. It's a technical term uh, for you geeks out there. <clears throat> okay, it made this stuff easy. Okay, and so you know, and then I have a database-driven one, database 
uh, PHP version of this one. That's the advanced, advanced version of this app. So just kind of want to show you where I was hoping to go with this. Uh, uh, but, but what we're going to try to do in the time that remains is another app, hopefully, see how far along we can get. Uh, and that is the second one. So I want to go to, uh, I guess I'm going to close up my uh, website. So I need to do that. So let's go back to my website and we're going to uh, open up another uh, app. Um, try to get through this one fast. Yeah, and, and, I, and I, yeah, this, this version right here is local stores. Yeah, and you can literally. You exit out of it and it remembers your settings. So that's a, that's a local storage version. Now these two, once you clear it, you know, you get out of the browser, it's gonna go back to the default stuff. But the, this is a local storage and this is a database driven one. This fourth one right here. These are the same, but this one is database and this one is local storage. The drawback to local storage, you're limited to what is five megs? Yeah, five megs. So, if you don't have a lot of data to save, local storage may be a good candidate for you to do, and it's easier to implement. When you're dealing with PHP, MySQL, you need to know you need to know how to do data. You not need to like create a database, how to connect to it, how to create queries, and all that fun stuff. Uh, and and that takes takes some wherewithal to learn, but not that difficult. <clears throat> okay, so with that in mind, we want to click on this uh, up at the top here, and we're going to go to this uh, intermediate. To do less. That's what I want to do. To do less. I want to do. Okay. So let's see if we can get through this rather fast. In fact, man, I'm almost. I tell you what. Let's do this just for the sake of time. Um, because again, there's a symmetry here. I'm a, what I call again employee technique. I'm fond of called fake it till you make it. Uh, I'm gonna take this e notepad. And I'm going to save it as, what is it, e-to-do list. So let's do file, save as. You're just going to save us some, some steps. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is go to my body tag and delete everything in my body tag. Okay, because I'm kind of creating a new app. I've been using this as a template just to save some time. Because we, we press for time, believe me. Right? And I'm going to clean up my, uh, this other, uh, up here in my title, obviously I want to name that what? E to do list. Right? And then the link, uh, we could probably use that same CSS style sheet, I think. That's going to come in handy. We're going to use the same framework, so that's going to come in handy. The same script, let's gut this for right now, uh, except for what's common. No, no, it's not. And let me make sure I got everything. I tell you what, let, 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 I'm gonna just delete this because I don't want to confuse you guys with what to delete or not. Uh, but I do want my framework, okay? So keep your framework, change the title, uh, and if I click over here, you can see it's, it's gonna disappear because I've erased it, right? But we got a new app we call in the e-to-do list, and this is going to save us some time. Right. So with that in mind, okay, we've already done this because that's part of the same app that we just did. Uh, now let's create the view, copy what's in blue, and paste it between the body tag just like before, remember? So go between your body tag and paste that in. Oh, do I? 
Yeah, I, I was when I was doing that earlier. It, uh, thank you for that. For some reason, my my cursor went up there. That was a good. You get another five brownies for that. Uh, yeah, you know, it just went up there for some reason, for some odd reason, and I start typing up there. A good catch on that. Okay, so I pasted, and now, now I got my apps. It's static, right? It's my eat to do list, got my little menu, add to do list, and all that fun stuff. Buttons in the, in the whole whole. Okay, so we got that. Now obviously we got to change some other things. Okay, so that's my body. Okay, and the CSS, uh, I think it's the same. Uh, but if it's not, I'm going to just paste over it. So I'm going to copy this. Yep. Copy. Okay, and I'm going to go to my CSS, and I can get it from my, tech, my what, rabbit trail, we call it, right? And I'm gonna just select this and just paste right over it, right? And I think it was the same, huh? A rabbit trail. I call this my rabbit trail. This is what they call dependent files in Dreamweaver. But I think I think the I think the code was the same. But I'm not quite sure, so I want to just paste over it again because I'm for time. Okay, so that's my CSS, and I've already linked it. Uh, but I need to name, rename it because this is a e to do list CSS. So actually, I need to, yeah, uh, I'm going to copy this and paste it. Is that right? Yeah, you're right. Okay, good. So you're right. Okay. Okay, so we got we got this, right? Now let's apply it to the panel and to other places. So actually do we have, I don't know if we should no, we deleted that out. So let's add the panel class, right? And this is my uh, div tag. I'm going to paste that right in here and bam. So you're right. So I have my CSS already in place. Sam, Sam, look and feel like we had for the previous app, right? Yeah, I think we could have used it. We, you, again, I wasn't sure if we could use the same CSS or not. Now, let's add the dynamic stuff. <clears throat> okay, I think that's next. Okay, well, there's one other thing here too that I've added. So copy this uh, another class called app title. You don't have to, but uh, and that's part of the H1 tag. Space paste, and it just gives that little, the little bullet. You know, you don't have to do that. Okay, we we didn't do that in the other one. That's what I was missing. Okay, I'm, I need to get huh? No, what, what happened? I'm talking about this is, a, this is what we call a little bullet shape, a pill shape, rather, we call it. <clears throat> and that, that's in the CSS style to do that, to give it a, the, the corners and the curves and the color and stuff. Okay, so we have that. Uh, we got that. Now let's add some dynamic stuff. Now, we have this already, don't we? Did we keep that in there? No, we, no, we just kept the, the framework. Uh, so let's add this variable. And I forgot that I did I deleted my script, so I need to add a script tag. Right? So open it. Close it. And then paste that in. Oh, wrong thing. I need to select that, copy it. Have that in memory and paste it. And this is my e to do list app. The other one was an e notepad app. This is a e to do list app. Again, this is the object. I'm assigning a module to it, giving it a name, and it doesn't have any dependencies, right? 
So let's move on. And we're going to be moving rather fast. So we did that already, right? And we got that. Okay, so let's rename our app in our body bag to e to do list app. And again, I'm moving trash here. And I assume this would be e to do controller. Right, so I'm going to copy all of this, and I'm going to paste it below that variable, right, and see, and, and what I like to do, just to avoid mistakes, I always like to cut, copy and paste, right, I always like to copy and paste, what I call CPU, cut, paste, and update, not to be confused with central processing unit, for you in computer scientists out there. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm going to copy this, the name of my controller, and I'm going to paste it in my body as such, right? So again, I assign the body both the app, uh, app name and the controller to the body tag. And again, it could be separate tags, but I want to keep it simple. So you have an app right now. It's not functional right now, but we do have indeed an app. We got that done. And then we want to add this app. This is an expression. We want to add this to the H1 tag, <clears throat> which is above the form tag. Now, let me see, what is that? Um, So right now, it's static paste. Notice it's dynamic right here. You see that? And I don't know if I made that. There we go. Boom. So now it's dynamic. Okay, the title is dynamic. Okay, and you can see it up here. Uh, app title, e to do list. So whatever you put here is going to get reflected in the title of the app. Now, that's good because once you start making these, in fact, all of these apps are basically the same. Once you create a template for it, man, I can rock and roll. I can gut it and create another app in five minutes, right? So you want to make things that are common. Like, you know, my look and feel is the same. I got the, the, the rounded corners, the drop shadow. But don't reinvent the wheel, right? So that's going to be the same across all of those apps, right? And then notice I got the, the title. That's going to be the same, and I can make it dynamic, so all I got to do is just change a variable somewhere, and it changes everywhere else in my application. So let's see. Okay, so we've got that going. Uh, let's add this right here. Copy this. Default item that we want to put in our list. And you want to put this inside of the controller, right, because that's what we want it to do. Again, let me make sure I am not. I hate, I hate the Russian. Uh, you see right here these curly braces. That makes it dynamic, and it's it's coming from this variable up here to populate it with this e to do list name. You see right here. Whatever I put up here is going to be the name of my app, right here. See, let me put an X on it. Watch. So I put an X on it, and when I click over here, get X get shown on there. Okay, so it's not hardware now; it's dynamic. Okay. That's all the event. That's the advantage of using Angular JS. It's all about being dynamic, right? <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and typically you want to be pulling stuff from a database, right? And then, so I could create a database driven app and it populate the titles, the copyright notice. I usually like to keep my copyright notice, for example, 2015 and then dash 2018. Well, I never have to change that because that's dynamic. So when 2019 rolls around, it's going to change to 2019 automatically, right? So I keep everything dynamic, okay? I'm a big stickler for time. Anything <laughs> save me time, I'm game for it, right? Anyway, let's move on because I'm kind of rushing here. I don't like to be rushing through code. Uh, so let's see here. I'm going to copy this again. And this is a... This is an array uh, of to-do list items. It's what, what we have here for those who may not know. This is an array. An array have what they call name value, key value pairs, right? Associated with them for each object in the array. <clears throat> and so well, let me, this is in the controller. Make sure I paste that in the right place. And oh, by the way, I'm using that to, um, Paste that in, and I'm gonna just clean my code up just a little bit. Okay, so paste that in the control again. Carve out me some space so you can see it. So this is the controller right here, just to let you know. And just highlight it down. So everything in here gets executed. So basically it's saying create an array of to-do list items in there. Now, I'm going to go to my div tag. And copy this. This is a repeat. Now, this is like a loop in most programming. If you're familiar with any programming construct like looping, right? Uh, how you loop through stuff, right? Loop for each loop, for in loop, or whatever loop. Well, there's a directive in JS that uses this one word called repeat. I love it. Right, because you don't have to do, you know, for I equal to this, you know, and that, uh, then condition, and then I dot dot, I plus plus, whatever, right? All of that's contained within the directive. So copy this. Okay, so I got a couple things in here, and again, I need to make sure I paste it in the right place. So this is in my form in the div tag. So scroll down. And I'm right here. And I want to paste that in. Make sure I'm in the right place. And then I want to come and copy this. And we'll paste that right out of the checkbox. And I'm going to explain this after I finish it. And we'll copy this one. So get everything. That's in that span, space, paste. And then I got the to do text. And that is going to replace this word right here, the static stuff. Okay, now if I've done everything right, and I hope I did, because I usually don't like to be rushed up. Um, let's see what we get. Voila. Okay, there we have it. So notice I got my two items in my to-do list, because that was part of my rate. And again, let me just show you where, where that's come from for the, some of you looking at my cafe at a new gate. Um, Let's go back up here. You see this array has gas car, right? You see that? And then whether or not it was done. Because it hadn't been done yet, so there's not a check on it, right? Uh, and then there's a to-do list, pick up kit, right? And that hadn't been done yet. So I got two items, default items, if it's there, uh, in my to-do list. Now you can put whatever you want, or you can not put anything at all, right? I just happen to want to put two items, because I like to see stuff. I'm a visual learner. I want to see stuff. Right, that's a technical term stuff. 
Okay, as so I have two items with no check, right? So the done is uh, false. When it's true, done is going to be true. Uh, the Boolean value. Okay, so there we have it. And you see them right there. And again, I click on it, and nothing happens, right? Because I hadn't created a code for, for stuff to happen. I try to do that quickly. Hopefully. Now I'm going to add the add function. So here we go. I'm going to copy this. Don't went too far. Copy that. And I'm going to paste this right below that to do list array. Okay, so let's hope that works. So that's my array. Hit paste and save. And then I'm going to use my submit button. Now, just like in uh, in most database-driven applications, you got to submit form, right? You use the submit button to submit form, right? Well, there's a direct for that in AngularJS. There's a direct for everything. Right. That's what makes Angular so good. And again, I don't expect you guys to understand all of this. I'm just telling you, life is easy when you use AngularJS. So go figure it out yourself. Just tell you life is easy. And I always like to make my life easy. Okay. <clears throat> so you, again, I don't expect you to understand everything. I know some of you guys probably kind of glazed over by now, and that's okay. Uh, usually when you're learning something first, you go to that frustration zone, right? But when you become proficient at it, you live where I live, in the fun zone. I live, I love to live in the fun zone, okay, and I do. <clears throat> okay, so yeah, this may be frustrating to you now because you don't know it. But when you get to know it, it's fine, okay? So I'm in the fun zone. Uh, so I'm going to copy this, and this is my submit functionality for my form, if you will. And I'm not going to put the data data dash on it. I could. Okay, and then I'm going to put the model. Now, what model does, and I, and I didn't mention this before, but it models the data, the application data. Okay? It's just like a, a real-life model. You know, you know, you see them being modeling, right? It models the data from the application. Okay, that, in this case, the array. I want to model that array. So I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to put that in the input thing and where do I put it right after my type text space and hopefully I'm, I'm at a place where something work okay because I know I'm up against the clock um, so let's hope this works if I paste everything in the right place uh, I'm gonna right click and uh, choose this or oh, you Brett? Okay, so I'm gonna type in. What do y'all want to do? Order pizza. Okay, okay. Order pizza, right? And did did I add my add? Did I add a click to my add button? I don't know if I've done that yet. But I guess I, I had already did. So that, yeah, yeah, that's right. Cause yeah, I had a. Oh, you just on top of it too. Um, so there we go. Now, so I, you got to add it. See that? Um. I want to go home because I'm getting tired, okay? So go home, bam, okay? So there you have it. Okay, so I still got a few more minutes. I'm going to try to squeeze in another functionality. It's going to be tight, but it's going to be right. And again, I'll switch you guys to be confident. If you could just look at all of this on my website, you could do it when you have time to think about what, what you're doing because I'm, I'm actually rushing through this, to be honest with you. So that was added. That worked, didn't it? Okay. Uh, let's do the remove because typically you want to remove an item because I have I have the little paper to do list right you know you strike strike through it right uh, and so let's do the remove function so I'm gonna copy what's in blue and paste it right below my other code so right here it paste okay you see why it's good to add those little comments because you can really see where to start and stop code that's life is good. Uh, and then I'm going to add a, uh, a click event, right, for that in my button. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to put it in the um, remove item. See this right here? Button. I'm going to paste that in like that. So again, listening for a click event. When it hears that click event, execute that function called remove. Guess what remove does? 
Wow, you guys are so smart. Okay. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So let's see if that works. I'll say. And preview that in the browser again. And so I'm going to add something. Again. Now, because we don't have local storage, every time we do it, it's going to always default to the two elements in that list. And I'll hit add. Got to add it, right? Now, when I click on this, I hit remove. It's going to remove the one that I got checked, right? Because I've already completed that assignment. See, it goes piece of right there. We've already ordered pieces. Okay, so hit remove, bam. Thank you. Okay, but if I click uh, pick up kid, which I don't have in it, you know, my kids are grown. So I don't need to pick them up. They pick me up now. Uh, hit that, bam. So I can literally remove the items from my list. But I wanted to get fancy. I want to have it a strike through. Okay, and then add some other little functionality to the mix. Uh, and so let me just show you that because, again, this is all on my website. I'm going to just show you the finished version of this and how it works uh, on my website. Now, all I'm doing is adding one functionality after the other, right? You notice I'm in add, remove, delete, right? Just one thing after the other, and I'm just telling it what to do. Create an object, give a name, tell it what to do. That's all you ever do in any programming, object-oriented programming language. Okay, so let me just show you the finished version of this because I know I'm pressed up against the clock, the clock. Uh, and that is this to-do list here. Actually, I'll place take this down here. So here we go. So this is the finished version of that. Again, if I hit auto pizza, if I click on it. Notice get added now. Uh, I've added some functionality, so if you hit add without anything in it, it doesn't add a blank line. Right now, if you hit add, it would add a blank line. So anyway, I could click and add as many items as I want in my list. And I'm just typing some gibberish just for the sake of time. And then when I select what, notice when I select it, this is the coolness, this is slicker than slime. I mean, you know slime is slick, okay? Uh, notice it gives you to let me know I completed that assignment, or that task, or that to-do item. Uh, so those are the ones I want to get rid of, right? That gibberish that I just wrote, I just, I just added. And notice right here, I got two of five items to be completed. So now I'm keeping track of the number of items I need to be completed within my list. When I click remove, bam, it removed the list and update the number of items I need to have completed, two of two. And so that's the finished version of this application that we didn't have time to do. And then we didn't do the directory, but that's a little bit more advanced version for another day, another time. That concludes my presentation.